Good morning and happy holidays to you and your family. This is the Church of God and this is our Friday service, which is typically in the evening. Uh, but in light of the holiday, this is our tradition to do it in the morning. So uh, this is our Christmas morning service, 10 o'clock, Church of God, 4601 South Drexel. And Elder Ricky Dukes is our pastor. Um, and as you gather in and gather the family together, we're going to acknowledge the Lord in prayer that God would bless our time together today. Father, we're thankful for your goodness. We're thankful for your grace. We thank you for the rest you allowed us to get on last night, dear God, Lord. Uh, you kept burglars away and fires away, dear God, Lord. And uh, you protected us from hurt, harm, and danger. And we're thankful for that. Uh, someone was burglarized last night, Lord, but you protected our home, dear God. Uh, someone was robbed, dear God, but you protected us, God, and we thank you for that. Yes. Uh, Father, our families, the angels have encamped about us, oh God, and we thank you this morning. Uh, even this year, as challenging as it's been, you allow us to see December 25th. We're still in the land of the living, and God, we're thankful for that, dear God. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, we have already come. Tis grace that has brought us safe thus far, and grace will lead us on, dear God. We pray this morning for the many families around the world that are grieving this morning, dear God. Father, so many are hurting, dear God. So many are hurting, uh, suffering loss, and we pray that you would comfort them today, dear God. That you would wrap your arms around each and every one, dear God. Bind up broken hearts, Lord. Bless your word. Give us what we need. Inspire us. Encourage us. Talk to us, God. And Father, for all that is accomplished, Lord, that soul that's nearest to hell, we pray for mercy this morning. That soul that's contemplating suicide, show mercy this morning. Pray, God, that the love of God will be shed abroad, dear God, that they would feel your love and your mercy one more time, dear God. And Lord, for all you do, we'll give you the glory, the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen, and I am. I'm thankful to be alive this morning, yes. thankful to be saved. Yes, uh, as the scripture says, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will. We've made a determination. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. And I will tell you, with all that 2020 has brought, uh, we are blessed in spite of it all. You know, you don't hear a lot of positives about 2020. Most people who talk about 2020, they got all kind of memes and things that disrespect 2020 and talk about how horrible it is. But listen, any day that God wakes you and I up is oh, yeah. a good day. Oh, yeah. Any day above ground is a good day. Yeah. Anything else that happens, he'll give us the grace to deal with it. Yeah. But we need to be thankful to be in the land of the living. And I want to say to the many families all over the world uh, that are grieving this morning, I realize that everybody's not happy this morning. Uh, some people are crying this morning. Some people are dealing with grief this morning. Some people have fresh losses this morning, and uh, some people are facing their first Christmas without that loved one. And I, I want to let you know that the, the pastor, the ministers, the congregation yes. of the Church of God here, we're praying for you. Yes. We're carrying the burden that God would bind up your broken heart. Yes. And God will never give us more than we can bear. Yes. Nothing catches him by surprise. And we certainly want to let you know that God is still our very present help in time of trouble. You know, I told uh, somebody this, and it's true. Sometimes when these losses happen, the devil tries to make people angry with God. Yes. And they get bitter towards God. Yes. They don't want to hear anything about God. We were given a report of a man who was in a room with another man. And uh, the man began to pray. And this man, because he didn't want to hear the prayer, picked up something and killed the man. People get bitter with God during these times. But you and I don't need to get bitter with God. He is the only help we have. Amen. And even when we don't understand why he allows some things, we need to recognize, Lord, even when I don't understand, I know you're perfect in all that you yeah, do. Right. And there's a purpose to everything you allow to happen. And so I want to encourage you, don't get bitter with God. That's the last one you want to get bitter with. Yeah. When you don't understand, tell him, Lord, I'm hurting. I don't yeah. understand why right. you allowed this. Right. But guard my heart, God. Don't let me get bitter with you. Don't let me get angry and, and, and callous toward God. Because oh, yeah. you're going to need him before he needs you. I guarantee you that. Amen. So this afternoon, we want to get into the, the word of God. Uh, Luke, the second chapter. Uh, ever so often, I have these situations where I, I need two readers, and today is one of those days. And so you'll hear a couple voices uh, helping me out reading. 
as we go through the scriptures. Everything that we do is based on scripture. And we want to make sure you get the word of God. Luke, the second chapter. Let's start at verse number four, please. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, under the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. So most people know the story. Every year we, we tell the story. We put the nativity scene and things in our yards. Uh, and we, we put Jesus in the manger and, and the story is told. And so we're going to read. that It's in the Bible, right? It's not a fairy tale. It's something that actually happened. Sure. And that's what we're reading here. Joseph went from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Come on. Because he was of the house and lineage of David. And it was prophesied that the Messiah would come through the lineage of David. Come on. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, Mary, being great with child. Come on, Mary, his fiance. Come on. Being great with child. And she just happened to be impregnated, not by Joseph, but by the Holy Ghost. Come on. And so it was that while they were there. While they were there. The days were accomplished that she should be delivered. The days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son. She brought forth her firstborn son. And wrapped him in swaddling clothes. Wrapped him in swaddling clothes. And laid him in a manger. And laid him in a manger. Come on. Because there was no room for them in the inn. And this manger was technically a feeding trough for animals. But because there was no room in the inn, she swaddled the baby and lays him in the manger. Keep reading, please. And there was in the same country shepherds abiding in the field. Keeping watch over their flock. By there were some shepherds. Come on. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. Yes. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them. Come on. And they were sore afraid. Come on. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, come for on. behold, I bring you good tidings. I got good news. I got some good news. Uh, listen, I don't know about you. I'm always good to get some good news. A lot of calls I get are not good news. So when I do get a call with good news, I say thank you for telling me some good news. Here, they came, they said, don't be scared. We got some good news. We got some good tidings for you. Come on. I bring you good tidings of great joy. Of great joy. Which shall be to all people. And it's not just for black people. And it's not just for white people. And it's not just for Chinese people. It's going to be for all people. Come on. For unto you is born this day. Because I got some good news. I got some good news. Unto you is born this day. Come on. In the city of David. In the city of David. Come on. Which is Christ the Lord. A Savior. Come on. An anointed one. A deliverer, a savior, which is Christ the Lord. Keep reading. And this shall be a sign unto you. This is how you're going to know. Come on. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. This is how you're going to know where the Messiah is. You're going to find a baby in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Come on. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly Oh, host. it got going. You know, the world say the party got going. It got going at that point. All of a sudden it was like, oh, he born. Oh, it's coming to pass. Come on, the angels got excited. Come on. Praising God. They were praising. Listen, they weren't praise dancing. They were praising God. Why? Because the Messiah had been born. Because the Savior had been born. Because the one who came to deliver us from all sin had been born. And it caused some excitement. And I don't know about you. When I was bound in sin and I came to the realization that someone had died for my sins. Someone had died to deliver me. Someone had died to give me some power. It, it did something to me. I started getting excited. I went down on my knees. I started crying. I said, Lord, forgive me. And all of a sudden, the angels start rejoicing just like they did this day. Praising God and saying, verse 14. Glory to God. Glory to God. I will tell you, if nobody else is celebrating, if nobody else is happy about the birth of Christ, the people of God ought to be happy. You and I ought to be rejoicing that Jesus came to deliver us. Glory to God in the highest. Come on. Come on. 
from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem come on. and see this thing which has come to pass. We gotta go see Lord this thing. Yeah. We gotta go see this thing. Known unto us. Come on. And they came with haste and found Mary yeah. and yeah. Joseph yeah. and the babe lying in a manger. Come on. And they and when they had seen it. They made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. Mm -hmm. They let everybody know yeah. what was going on. Yeah. When, you, when you make contact with the Messiah, with the Savior of the now known world, you don't just go in the corner and keep it to you. Tell out, said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I couldn't keep it to myself. You go tell them people. Wait a minute. I used to be bound, yeah. but then I came in contact yeah. with someone who yeah. changed my life, That's who right. stopped me from smoking, who stopped me from gambling, who stopped me from lying. You go tell them, folks. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Right. Every year during this time, I want to say this. The Bible does not tell us when Christ was born. It does not say it was December 25th. Right. His birth has nothing to do with trees and chestnuts and That's presents right. and elves and Santa Claus. But I'm not going to take a lot of time to deal with that today. I want to tell you I'm thankful to live in a country that recognizes the Savior was born. I want to tell you I'm thankful. I don't know what day it was, but somebody tried it. I don't know what day he was born, but I know he was born. And I'm thankful to live in a country where we're free to celebrate that a Savior was born. So I want to take my time today and focus on something else. Uh, we can take it to Jeremiah and all that. I, I want to do that today. I want to take my time and I want to capitalize. On, I think about Paul. When Paul went to Mars Hill, they had all these false gods set up. Yes. And Paul was dealing with them yep. on Mars Hill. Yes. And instead of taking a lot of time to tear down their false gods, all he right. capitalized on an opportunity. Right. See, right. Right. You, right. you got the unknown God here. Yeah. Right. This is an opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, this afternoon, I'm going to capitalize on an opportunity. Right. I don't plan to take a lot of time talking about all that. You already know that. I want to take time to focus on something else. Right. So every year, we put him back in the major. On your birthday, most of us on our birthday, they don't take you back to your, your, your actual birth story. Right. right? They don't say, okay, it was University of Chicago. Let's go back to the hospital. Yeah. This is the bed you was laying in. Uh -huh. And that's where your mama had you. That's why they cut you off. They don't do that. No. Right. But every year we put him back in the manger. We, we put him back as a baby. And by doing that, we diminish the power yes. of right. what he taught. Yes. 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 Right. Amen. We diminish his gospel by reducing him back to this, this little innocent, quiet baby mm -hmm. in a manger. Right. Right. Verse number 40, Sister Crystal. Same chapter. Luke 2 and 40. And the child grew. And the child grew. Wow. And that's white that's, that's, that's not important. Yeah. The child grew. Yeah. Listen, he didn't stay a baby in a manger. Yeah. He grew and something happened. Read Sister Crystal. And waxed strong in spirit. And he waxed strong in spirit. Come on. Filled with wisdom. He had wisdom. And the grace of God was upon and him. And the grace of God was upon him. Why? Because he was about to take something out to the world. And years ago, I preached a message, and I want to go back down this route. The message after the manger. Okay, yes, sir. This is the message after the manger. Every Christmas, we get a lot about the manger. We, we see the nativity scenes, and, and we talk about it, and it is. It's important to talk about the birth of Christ. But I, this afternoon, I want to focus on the message after yes, the manger. Sir. Because the baby grew up, yes. and he had a gospel, and he had a message to preach to people. Right. Yeah. Sister Corinza, Luke, the 19th chapter, and verse number 9. Sister Crystal, 1 John, the first chapter. Luke 19 and 9 is where we're going now. And Jesus said unto him, Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. This was Zacchaeus. He said, This day is deliverance. We know in Matthew 121, the Bible says, And she shall bring forth the son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save or deliver his people from their sins. 
So now here's Zacchaeus, a man, a tax collector who had been stealing, who had been doing wrong, and he comes in contact with Jesus Christ. This is the Jesus after the manger. This is the adult Jesus. He comes in contact with him, and Jesus says, this day is deliverance come to your house. Come on. For as much as he also is a son of Abraham. Come on. For the son of man has come to seek and to save. He said, I have come yeah. to seek and to deliver who? That which was lost. I've come to look for the drug addict. Yeah. I've come to look yeah. for the crackhead. Yeah. I've come to look for the prostitute. Yes, I've come to look for the born and good person. Yes, I've come to look for the hypocrite. I'm looking for folks that are lost people that are considering suicide. Yeah. The very purpose of Jesus coming was to seek the lost and to deliver them. Yeah. Not just to come and say, yeah, you're a crackhead. Always was a crackhead, always a crackhead. No, no, no. I've come to seek and to yeah. save anybody who's lost. Yeah. But in order for him to save you, you and I first got to recognize we're lost. Amen. If sin is in your life, you're lost. Yeah. If you're still committing willful sin, you're lost. Yeah. But I've got good news. A Savior was born, and he grew, and he preached the gospel that will deliver you from all sin. That's right. He said, I came to seek and save that which was lost. Sister Crystal, 1 John, the first chapter, and give me verse 5. Sister Corinthians, Romans, the fifth chapter. Come this on, then is the message which we have heard so, of So, 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 here we go. The message after the manger. This then is the message. Come on. Which we have heard of him yes. and declare unto you. And we're telling you about it. That God is light. God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. Oh, see, I love how the scripture yes, sir, is very yeah. plain. Oh, yeah. He said God is light. Yeah. And in him is no darkness at all. At all. There's no sin in God. Yeah. There's no smoking in God. Yeah. There's no cursing in God. There's no lying in God. There's no fornication in God. Here's the message after the manger. He came to tell you if you're saved, that means sin is gone. Because God is light and in him is no darkness. When you and I stay in him, we stay out of darkness. And when we're not in him, guess what we're in? We're in darkness. And so the message after the manger, it tells us God is light. Yep, yep. And in him ain't no darkness at all. at all. God don't have people sneaking out on their spouses. Amen. God don't have people smoking marijuana. Amen. God don't have people gambling. Amen. God don't have people cursing. In him is no darkness at all. Yes, sir. We please. Yes, sir. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie so, and do not the truth. So, you know, during the Christmas time, Christmas time is one of the times where people are most hypocritical. Mm -hmm. They talk about you all year round. Come they stand you all year round. But then they put on their colors and put on their hats and stuff. And everybody get in the, in the spirit. Mm -hmm. yes. They curses. They curses. And then they start opening up gifts. And they find out you ain't get them what oh. they thought. Oh. And they start coming out. Little Uncle Joe, who a deacon at the church, started oh. cussing. Uh -oh. I don't know you know, he's not he's like cussing. Uh -oh. Uncle Joe, Deacon Joe, cussing folks out because he's mad that the present he got ain't what he expected. But the message after the manger teaches us God is light. Mm -hmm. And in him is no darkness at all. So if Uncle Joe is cussing us out, that's because he's not in God. That's right. Right? right. Amen. Right, right. Amen. And he is in darkness. Yeah. Read, please. But if we walk in the light, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, Lord, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. It cleanses us from what? All sin. All. Wow. Yeah. And it begins a work that will eventually eradicate the very nature of sin yeah. from our lives. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Amen. This is the message after the meeting. Uh, you know, we want to stay around and put them in swallowing clothes and oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. And that's nice. But he grew up. Yeah. And, and he grew in grace. Yeah. And in power of the spirit. And he had a revolutionary gospel. Yeah. He came around telling people, listen, you can't continue to live that way. And we're going to get to that. Uh, Sister Corinthians Romans 5 and verse number 6. Sister uh, Crystal John the third chapter. 
Romans 5 and 6, please. For when we were yet without strength. When we were yet without strength. In due time. In due time. Christ died for the ungodly. He died for the ungodly, the people that didn't deserve it. He died for the cutthroats and the hypocrites and the people who were pimps and prostitutes and gangbangers. He died for us even when we didn't deserve it. Read, please. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. He said, man, you can't hardly find nobody who will die for you. Come on. Yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare Every to die. Every once in a while, you might find somebody who would die for a good man. Read, please. But God. But God. Commended his love he for proved, us. He proved, he showed, he exalted his love toward us. Come on. And that while we were yet well, sinners, yes. come on. So is the gift. 
For the judgment was by one to condemnation. Yes. But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. That's good that we can go further, but we'll stop there. Sister Crystal, John, the third chapter, give me verse 16. Sister Corinza, John 14 and 6. We're at John, the third chapter, in verse number 16 right now. The message after the manger. After Jesus grew up, after he got out of that little uh, uh, manger and actually started preaching to people. Yeah. Listen, he was 12 years old. He was in the temple yeah. disputing with doctors yeah. and all those folks. Yeah. He was preaching the gospel at 12 years old. Yeah. The message after the manger empowers young people to be strong in the gospel. Yeah. The message after the manger says no matter how young you are, let no man despise thy yeah. youth. Yeah. God can use a child. Yes. Josiah was eight years old when God used him. Yes. God can use a child if you're willing to give your heart to Jesus. Yes. Twelve years old. There was a message after the manger. John, the third chapter, verse number 16. For God so loved the world. Here's an important part of the message after the manger. For God so loved. I'd like to put loved. emphasis on this. He so loved. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, we talk about love, but you don't know no love till you come in contact with the love of God. You've never known a love like this. You'll never know a love like this. He said God so loved the world. Amen. Amen. The message after the man, he said, I love you so much. How do I prove it? What do I give to show how much I love you? How can I, how many times must I prove how much I love you? He showed you and I, he loved us by giving his only begotten son. Yes. Read please. And he gave his only begotten son. Come on. That whosoever believeth in him. Here's the message. Whosoever, whosoever believeth. It's a continual thing. It's not I believe one time and that's it. No, no, no. It's continual. You and I have to continue to believe on Jesus yeah. and believe in Jesus. On a daily basis, we're making a choice. Lord, I believe you're the Savior of the world. Yeah. Lord, I believe you're a keeper. Lord, I believe you're a healer. Lord, I believe you're the Prince of Peace. When I'm in hard times, my faith has to rise up and tell me he's going to come through again. We're believing in Jesus Christ. Read, please. Should not perish. You will not perish. You will not waste away. You will not be destroyed. Listen, you know, saints, you know how you and I are able to survive a pandemic? Because we believe in Jesus Christ. Yeah. We accepted Jesus Christ. And it keeps us, while others are perishing, it keeps us from wasting away. It keeps us from being destroyed because we're holding on to Jesus Christ. Right. The message after the manger, he will keep you. He will keep you if you want to be kept. Read, please. But have everlasting life. And you're going to live through eternity. Read on. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. He said, listen, let me tell you about the message after the manger. I didn't send him just to beat you That's down. right. That's right. That's right. Amen. Listen, all of us were lost at one point. Amen. And we didn't need nobody putting their foot on our neck. That's right. No. We didn't need nobody saying, yeah, you a drug guy. Yeah, you a gambler. Yeah, you a sleep around. You ain't nothing but a sheet. You sleep with everything that move. You ain't no good. You ain't going to never be no. We didn't need that. We needed a savior. Yes, sir. And he says God didn't send his son just to condemn the world, but he came with a resolution. Yes. See, some people, all they want to do is talk about problems. This was wrong, and this why that ain't gonna work, and this why this won't right, work. Right. But what solutions do you have? He, Jesus didn't come just to point out the problem. He came with a solution. You're messed up. You're guilty. You're a drunkard. You beating on your wife. You cheating on your wife. I've got a solution. Amen. I'm gonna save you. Amen. I'm gonna deliver you. Yes, I'm gonna give you some power. Right. Read, please. But that the world through him might be saved. The world. Through him. I'm going to tell you, when you study the story of Jesus, there was a king, Herod, who had heard that the Messiah was being born. Yeah. And so what Herod did is he sought out these wise men. He said, uh, hey, uh, y'all go find out where he is. And uh, everybody worshiping him, so I'm going to worship him too. Y'all right. uh, go tell me where he is, and when you, you find out where he is, let me know. But really, he wanted to kill him. That's right. 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 That's right. See, they've been trying to kill Jesus since the start. Right. They've been trying to remove Jesus off the scene from the start. Right. And they've been trying to take him out of prison for a long time. Right. Yes, sir. 
Come on. Trying to eradicate the message. Oh, sure. Right. sure. And you'll find that those wise men, they were searching and they eventually found him. But when they came in contact with him, they, they were changed. They, they couldn't dare do what they thought they were coming to do. Right. And the angel came and told them, look, y'all better get it together. They left and went the other way. They said, we ain't even going back the way we was. Right. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, when you come in contact with Jesus, he don't leave you the same. Yeah. You came, many of us came to church probably with cigarettes in our pocket. Probably with a pipe, thinking we were just going to come to church and then get high. But when you come in contact with Jesus, he don't leave you the same. Yeah. You can't do what you did before. That's they right. left and never came back. The Bible don't say it was three of them. It just say it was wise men. That's right. But they've been trying to kill Jesus for a long time. And the world is trying to kill him, kill his influence. They make jokes about him. They try to make us seem like fanatics. They put it in movies and in shows and make people seem like they're Bible beaters and fanatics. And they act like they're just extreme in everything they do to try to paint Jesus as some weirdo. Right. Huh? Right. Trying to kill his influence. Right. Yeah. But you can't do nothing with the message. Read, please, Sister Crystal. He that believeth on him is not condemned. Come on. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Yes. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So those of you who say, you know, Jesus, man, Jesus was just a force that was formed and put together and right, created right. and all of that. You're condemned already. Right, right, right. you missing out on the one that came to save your soul. Right. Listen, you can't get to God without Jesus. Amen. Some people tell you, I don't need no man to get to God. I'm man enough myself. Without the blood of Jesus, you're lost. Yeah. The message after the major teaches us that we needed a Savior. All of us needed a Savior. All of us have sinned. None of us were so good that we didn't need salvation. Right. And today, you need salvation. Some of you are watching us, and you're sitting there, and you're depressed. You're sitting there, and you're hurting, and you went online trying to find something to give you some type of soothing, to give you some type of peace, and I've got good news. There's a Savior of the now world who will deliver you from all sin, but you've got to first acknowledge that you're lost. Yeah. 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 Read, please. And this is the condemnation. Here's the condemnation. That light is come into the world. He said, look, I came in the world. And men love darkness but, rather than light. But people, they, they don't want to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. People don't mind being religious. They just don't want to live right. They don't mind joining church. They just don't want to live holy. Mm -hmm. See, people have a problem with the church of God. Let me say something to all the people that hate the church of God and talk against us and got nothing positive to say. Let, let me tell you something. We love you with the love of God. Amen. Amen. You can do it right. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. That's all I got to say. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You want me to come hard and come down on you, the condemnation on you. Love you with the love of God. Amen. Right. Right. But the people that have an issue with the church of God have an issue with the message. Because yes, right. right. the message doesn't let you live all slippery and sliding. The message that Jesus preached was you got to live holy, you got to live clean, you got to live tight. He talks about entering in at the straight gate. Because wide is the gate that leads to destruction. And many there be that find it. The message we preach is the message Christ preached. Amen. Amen. It's the message after the nature. Yeah. After we finish glowing and saying, oh, he's such a cute baby. He grew up and he started going and turning over tables saying, how dare you sell stuff in the house of God? Amen. Don't make my father's house a den of thieves. What's wrong with you? He preached to people and told them that, man, you got it, your husband. Right. He preached a gospel right. that condemned yeah. sin and gave people hope. Amen. It condemned sin, but yet it gave people hope at the same time. Yeah. Because he didn't just beat you down, he gave you the solution. He told you about yourself, but then he gave you a solution. Yeah. How to fix it. It's like the person they tell you, you must be. But then they'll give you a solution. You should go take a shot. Yeah. 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 I'm not just going to diagnose your condition. Who's your breath stink? Here's a peppermint. Yeah. Right? Here's a solution for your problem. Yeah. Jesus comes with solutions. He don't just beat you down. You're a sinner and you're going to hell. He said, no, no, no. I want to keep you from going. Right. I've come that you might have life. Oh, that's right. And that you might have it more abundantly. But I ain't no sugarcoat it. You are lost. And if you don't do something about it, you will be lost and go to hell. But I'm not willing that any should perish. So I've come. I paid a price to deliver you. I, I've come with a solution based gospel. That's right. Amen. Read, Sister Crystal. And men love darkness but, but rather people, than light. Even the people watching me. Some folks know they sin. And you'll comment like you the most Christine person that there is. Wow, wow. No, you commit sin. Lord, wow. But you love darkness. 
Yeah. Back up a message that you're disobeying. Right. Wow. Wow. Come on, bro. Come on. Right. You'll scream and say, preach it. Oh, that's anointed. That's the man of God. That's the woman of God. But you love darkness. You love standing sin. Wow. You love committing sin. Yes, and you love darkness rather than light. Yes, we please. Because their deeds were evil. That's the reason why. Because your deeds are evil. Yeah. We please. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. The people that do evil are the ones that got a problem with this message. Leave me alone. Ain't nothing wrong with my cigarettes. Ain't nothing wrong with my shacking partner. Ain't nothing wrong with my girlfriend. Ain't nothing wrong with my mother. Leave us alone. Turn that off. I ain't trying to hear that message. You got a problem because you're doing evil. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But the message after the manger says, I'm going to acknowledge you're doing evil. But I got a solution. Yep. You don't have to stay doing evil. You don't have to keep doing the wrong thing. Just because you started out eating out of dumpster don't mean you got to keep eating out of dumpster. I got a better life for you, but you got to acknowledge I'm tired of the life I'm living. We please. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. They hate the light. Neither come into the light. Come on. Unless his deeds should be reproved. That's why you're sneaking around. Yeah. And don't want nobody to see you. Because yeah. what you're doing is evil. Come on. But he that doeth truth cometh to the but light. But the saints, but the saints, but the saints, when we hear the message, when we hear the word, which is truth, Jesus Christ is truth, when it's revealed to us and it shows us we're short, we come up to it. We say, Lord, you're right. I was short in that area. God, you help me. Lord, you forgive me. We come up to the message. When God highlights something is short in our life, something is lacking in our life, those that are right, they measure up to it. That's right. But the people that's evil, they say, that ain't me, that ain't me, that ain't me. What verse you want, Sister Crystal? Verse 21. That's all I needed there. Sister Corinthians, John 14 and 6, Sister, Cor uh, Sister Crystal, Acts 4. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way. This is the message after the manger. Y'all was talking about Socrates and all these folks. Jesus said, Listen, let me, let me straighten something out. I know what they was doing before, yet, before, I, before I came on the earth here. I know what they was doing, but, but I'm here now. Let me straighten this out. Y'all saying you could, you could be this, you could be that, you can come go to heaven any kind of way you want to. No, no, let me straighten it out. It, it, ain't, it ain't but one way. Yeah. You use yeah. how many analogies yeah. you want to use. See, this is the message yeah. after the major. It's a revolutionary message. It's, an, it's a message that doesn't allow just everybody to do whatever they want to do. Jesus said, I need to establish something. Yeah. What does it say, Sister Ramsey? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way. Uh, and Thomas was like, well, we don't know. I mean, how are we supposed to know? He said, let me help you know. I'm the way. Yeah. If you're going to be saved, it's going to come through me. I am the way. Come on. The truth. I am the truth. Well, that's my truth. Well, if it ain't Jesus, it ain't truth. Come on. Right. Come on now. I'm living my truth. If it ain't Jesus, it ain't truth. That's Why? Right. Because Jesus said, I am the truth. That's right. I'm not a truth. I'm the truth. Come on. That's right. And the light. And I'm the light. If you don't have me, you're dead. Right. She that looked for pleasure is dead while she lives. Without Jesus, you're dead. But he comes, he says, I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. Give me verse 15, Sister Corinthians. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Here's another part of the message. Come on. Come on. All y'all people talking about, I love Jesus. Today you got on all these colors and you're talking about how you love Jesus. Really, the reality is Jesus is probably about the least one mentioned on this day. Come on, brother. Come on. That's true. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. It's his birthday, but you don't hardly hear about him. You talk about everybody else. Yeah, electric person. But he said, you that say you love me, here's the message. Then what I say? Come on. You people around the church of God saying you love God. Obey me. Yeah. Well, that's a good saying here. Yes, sir. But I'm here. Obey me. Amen. Well, ain't nobody in this house, but I'm here. Obey me. When I tell you don't look at that, don't look at that. No, right. When I tell you don't say that, don't say that. When I tell you don't act like that, don't act like that. When I tell you you acted like that, now you need to go repent and straighten it out. Obey me. If you love me, do what I say. Oh, how I love Jesus. You gotta add to it. Oh, how I love Jesus. How I love Jesus. You off on the note and off in your life. Wow. Good. If you love me, do what I say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Verse number 27, please. Peace I leave with you. This is a message after me. He said, look, I got something for y'all. I got peace. 
Man, you know that makes salvation worth it, just, sure. just having peace alone. Sure. Having peace in the midst of the storm. Yeah. When all the world is going crazy and you're able to sleep at night and not be guilty for all the stuff you did today, all the stuff, all the people you lied to, to not have to deal with all that, to have peace. To not know how the bill going to get paid, but to still have peace. To not know where the next bill going to come from, but you know you serve the God that owns a cattle on a thousand hill and he gives you peace. Until he allowed somebody yeah. to knock on the door and say, we just felt impressed to bring you some groceries. Just peace. Wow. Yeah. 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 Peace is a very rare commodity right now. And if you got it, you ought to be thankful for it. Yeah. He said, my peace I give you. Come on. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I, I ain't unto giving, you. I, ain't giving, I don't do that stuff where I give you something and take it back and then and take it out. Uh, he said, when I give you, it's going to be long lasting. Come on, read Let things. not your heart be troubled. He said, listen, some of y'all troubled. He said, look, let me encourage you. Here's a message after me. He said, look, I don't want you troubled like that. Neither let it be afraid. Come on, and some of you scared. I don't want you afraid. Come talk to me. You know, sometimes God want to come have us come to the altar. He said, look, y'all, you too troubled about stuff. This stuff getting next to you. It's bothering you too much. Come, give it to me. I'll take it from you. And some of us, saints, we bear heavy loads because we refuse to go get on our knees. Right, right, right. Listen, he like, I'm waiting on you. Are you tired? Is it? Are you ready to give it to me? I'll take care of it. I'll carry your burden. Would you let it go? But too many of us, we like, no, nah, Lord, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm just going to trust God. God going to get me through it. He like, would you let it go? you get worn out. Right. When are you going to come and lay it at my feet? That's right. I want to be in peace. Right. I got yeah. something for you. Yeah. And you ain't even got to wait till the yeah. 17th. I got yeah. some peace. That's right. Come on. Read, please. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. No, that's good. John, Sister Crystal, Acts 4, Sister Corinza, uh, John 3. Sister Corinza, Acts 4, I'm Sister Crystal, Acts 4 and 10. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. By the name of Jesus. See, we need to establish this exclusiveness of Jesus Christ. He says, by the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Come on. Whom ye crucified. Y'all killed him. See, I'm going to tell you, the message after the manger will get you killed. Yep. Wow. Yes, the message after the manger got Jesus killed. Oh, yeah. Yes. Right. yes. yes. And listen, when you live and preach this message, it'll go. get you killed. Yes, they'll you. kill your influence, they'll kill your name, and eventually if God don't show mercy, they'll kill you. Oh yeah. My Lord. That's true. That's How true. many of God's people got killed? Listen, in Acts, you find that Herod had killed uh, uh, James and he was ready to kill Peter. Right. All because they preached the message after the manger. Right. Listen, as a man and woman of God, listen, preachers, we can't be afraid to preach the everlasting gospel. There are people that are coming to you, man, you need to shut up. I ain't trying to hear that. But God's got to fix our faces like a flint where we'll tell people you cannot sin and be saved. There's deliverance in salvation. And people want 46 and Drexel to sit down and shut up. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All these years, y'all been talking that. Oh, I ain't trying to hear that. I ain't trying to hear that. You ain't got to try to hear it. It's still going to be true. The message after the manger will live throughout eternity. They tried to kill him, but three days later, he rose. And no other religion can claim that their Savior died and rose again. Yeah. That's right. Oh, man. That's right, brother. It's a powerful message. Yeah. It'll change your life, but it only comes through Jesus Christ. Finish that, Sister Corinza. Whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. That's how we're able to live how we live. Somebody was telling me the other day, they said, man, you're doing at, at work. They said, you know, we've never seen, and they were doing all this great. I told them, they said, I don't know how you do it. And, and the devil was like, man, don't say it, don't say it. I said, I'll tell you how with a lot of prayer. Yeah, yeah. That's there you go. The message after the mouth, I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not strong enough. I'm not smart enough. It's prayer. It's obedience. And when you do it, God will fix your life. That's right. Yeah. Yes, sir. But the secret sauce is obedience to yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's accepting him. It's obeying him. And he will put your life together. Amen. Come on. This is the stone which was set at naught of the building. 
This is verse 11, Come Acts 4, 11. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, yes. which has become the head of the corner. Come on. Neither is there salvation in any other. There's no deliverance. What do you mean deliverance? Deliverance from drugs. Deliverance from him. Deliverance from smoking. Deliverance from cussing. Deliverance from cheating on your spouse. Deliverance from doing everything you know is wrong. Deliverance from lying. Deliverance from pornography. Deliverance from everything that you know God's not pleased with. The stuff I didn't mean. Little secret stuff that you're doing. There's deliverance. And the message after the manger gives you power. John 1 and 12 says to us, but he has received him. Yes. To them gave he power to become the sons of God. Power to say no to sin. Power to say no to temptation. Power to resist the world. Power to consist in the man holy. There's power in the message after the manger. Amen. Sister Corinza, give me John 3. Sister Crystal, John 5. Corinthians, St. John 3 and 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, Come on. a ruler of the Jews. He was a religious ruler. Come the on. same came to Jesus by night. And he and came at night because he wanted nobody to see him. Rabbi, Come on. we know that thou art a teacher come from God. We but no man know. can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Come on. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, Listen. he cannot see the kingdom of God. Sometimes people look at us and they say, man, I don't see how y'all live like that. I mean, I just don't see how you could not do this or how you could do that for so long. The only way you can understand this is when you're born again. Amen. You and I have to be born again. We have to have a new birth in Christ. We've got to come out of sin and come into salvation. And it does not come through water baptism, right? Some people tell you, as long as you get baptized, man, you ain't got, no, no, no. You go down, dry devil, come up a wet devil. We ain't talking about that. Sure. You've got to have a rejuvenation yeah. where you fall on your knees and say, God, forgive me for all of my sins. And a second birth occurs. You'll find that Nicodemus was so ignorant. He was like, how, how am I supposed to go back in my mind? You'd be surprised how many religious people are spiritually ignorant. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They don't know the ABCs of the message after the manger. They don't know that Jesus came to deliver us from sin. How many people? But Jesus told him, you've got to be born again. Uh, sister, the next sister, John, John 5, and Sister Corinza, give me 2 Corinthians 5. Sister Crystal, John 5 and 5. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity. Thirty and eight years. Can I ask you a question? How long have you been bound to sin? How long have you been smoking? How long have you been drinking? How long have you been gambling? How long? Those of you that are saved, how long have you had an infirmity? How long have you had this weakness and it ain't getting no better and you ain't doing nothing to address it? You won't even acknowledge it. You just sit there and say, no, this, it is what it is. No, no, no. There's some healing. Come on, right. This message of the message after the manger brings healing. Yes, sir. All throughout the scriptures, you'll find Jesus was healing people of infirmities, healing hurts. He was bridging relationships. You'll find the story of the prodigal son. I'm talking about the message after the manger. It puts families back together. Yes. The son had yes. left his daddy. Yes. He went out and sold his wild oats and spent all he had. And when he came back home, daddy could have said, I disowned you. Get out of here. But daddy was like, oh, no. Man, y'all better kill a fatty calf. All right. Me and my right. son, we had a fallout some years ago. Yeah. We ain't talked in a number of years. Come on, it's Christmas. Some people need to make a phone call. Yeah. Uh, we ain't talked in all this time. The message after the manger don't let you stay spaced, uh, uh, broken apart. The message after the manger allows you to come out of your comfort zone and bring out your white flag yes, and start sir. waving to that family member. Wait, hold on, cuz. Hold on, daughter. Yeah. Hold on, son. Yeah. Life too short. Eternity's too long. Come on home. It don't matter. We can't come to an agreement. Let's agree to disagree. But we're still family at the end of the day. The message after the manger puts fathers and wives back together. Puts fathers and sons back together. Puts mothers and daughters back together. Brothers and sisters back together. How many homes are split up? You're not talking to cousin so-and-so. You're talking to uncle so-and-so. The message after the manger brings healing to the family unit. He told him, man, y'all better kill the fatty cat. My son, he was dead, though. Yep. Hey, I got to be real with you. He was dead. Right. Right. Listen, you don't leave God and stay safe. Yeah. Right. Right. That's, right. That's right. Amen. Some people, they leave salvation. They leave the church of God, the teaching. 
Because it ain't the church in this physical location. You leave Christ. Yes, you leave the teaching of Christ. Yes, and with the knowledge, you go down to something less than Christ. And you think you still got what you had. No, yes, no, no. Yes. You left Christ. Right. But he's waving the white flag saying, come on home. And some people, talking about I'll be home for Christmas. Some people need to come home. Some people need to say, no, I'm tired. I'm tired of running. I'm tired of trying to be stubborn. I'm tired of trying to be rebellious. I'm coming home. I've wandered so far away from God. Now I'm coming home. It ain't about coming to no tree. It's about coming to the God tree. That old cross and falling on your knees. And saying, God, forgive me. Lord, forgive me all my sins. And God will save you even on this Christmas morning. God will deliver you even on this Christmas morning. You fall on your knees where y'all right now. God will save you right now. God will bring you in right now. God will heal your home right now. God will heal your broken heart right now. Amen. The message after the leader. Second Corinthians five seventeen. Therefore, therefore, if any man be in Christ. He is a new creature. He's a new creature. All things are passed away. Man. Behold, all things are become new. Come on. And all things so are done. So, First Peter two twenty one. We're bringing this to a close. Sister Corinza, give me why? 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 Give me John eight. So, Sister Crystal, give me whatever I told you. First Peter two twenty one. For even hereunto were ye called. Here's the message after the manger. This is why you were called. Come because on. Christ also suffered for us. He suffered for us. Leaving us an example. And he left us a template. On that he should live. follow his steps. And all you got to do is follow his steps. When you're angry, follow his steps. Mm -hmm. When you're frustrated, follow his steps. When you're scared, follow his steps. What does his steps do? Come on. Who did no sin. Whoa, first thing on the list. The message after the manger says sin got to go. That's right. We didn't finish it, but that man who had the infirmities, when Jesus healed him, he said, now listen. You go and sin no more, that's the worst thing come upon you. Right. See, the message after the manger eradicates sin. He said, listen, I done healed you, but I didn't heal you if you just went on and go back with your boyfriend, your girlfriend. No, 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 you better stop sinning. Right. And then he turned around and gave us power to do it. See, if Jesus won't tell you to do something, he won't give you the power right. to carry out. He told that man, you, you go and sin no more. That's the worst thing. Yeah. Some of you, God has warned you all throughout 2020. And because you disobeyed, worse stuff has happened. Yeah. Your disease got worse. Your illness got worse. The abuse got worse because you refused to stop sinning. Right. But when you take in the message after the manger, God will heal you and he'll fix your life. Amen. He Amen. told that one who got called after don't you sin and go and sin no more. Right. Yeah. That's the message. Yeah. Read please. Follow his steps. Who did no sin? Come on. Neither was guile found in his mouth. Oh, no dear seed. So listen, quit lying to your children about that heavy set Caucasian man coming through the church. Right. Oh, Lord. Jesus yeah. didn't lie. Neither yeah. should you. Yeah. That's right. Come on. That's right. For when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, Come he on, that's enough there. Let's, let's try to close here. Sister Corinza 8, uh, John 8, 31. Uh, and Sister Crystal Matthew 11, we'll close there. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. Some people don't believe that salvation is conditional. But the message after the manger teaches it is. John 8, 31, come on. If ye continue in my word. Conditional. Yeah. If, if, because there's a chance you won't. If you continue in my word. Read then are you my disciples indeed. Then you my disciples. Everybody's God's creation, but everybody's not God's child. Right. When you continue in his word, then are you his disciples. Come on. And ye shall know the truth. And you're going to know that word. Come on. And the truth. And shall the truth. You free. Your obedience to that word is what keeps you and I free from the bondage of sin. Right. You and I obeying. David said, Thy word in my head and my heart, that I might not sin against God. The word is our protection from sin. Right. Yeah. And the message after the manger tells us if we continue in it, then are we his disciples. How do we close? Matthew 11. There's a call from God on his birthday. He said, let me, let me do something. I want to do something special. I want to save somebody. Matthew 11, 28. Come unto me. He said, I, I want to invite you all. Yeah. Come to the church. No, come to me. Amen. Well, we can't go to church, but you can still come to Christ. That's right. Right. Come unto me. Yeah. But I'm in another country. Come unto me. Right. But I'm at home by myself. Come unto me. 
I'm having suicidal thoughts. I'm ready to just end it all. Come unto me. Nobody loves me. Come unto me. I already told you that God so loved the world. So today, when the devil tells you nobody loves you, remember what I just told you. God so loved the world. That's right. God loves you. We love you. And don't you allow the devil to take you to the dungeons of suicide. There is hope. There's hope. As long as you're breathing, there's hope. Don't you allow suicide to take over your mind. There's hope. He says, come unto me, all you that labor and I and will labor. Come and come I on. will give he you said, rest. I'm give you some. It's my birthday, but I'm going to give you some. Yeah. I'm going to give you wow. rest. Read. Take my yoke upon you. Then now you got to take my yoke upon you because you need some boundaries. And learn of me. You used to live in wow. The message after the manger gives us boundaries. Yeah. It only lets us go so far for our own safety. God said, if I don't give you boundaries, you'll go off a cliff. If I don't give you boundaries, you'll hurt yourself. So he says, take my yoke upon you and learn to me. Come on. For I am meek I'm and meek. lowly in heart. And lowly in heart. And he shall find rest and unto today, your souls. Today, people, their souls are tired. Their souls are crying out. Yes. He says, I got rest for your soul. Amen. Won't you come to me? If you're listening, if you're in the sound of my voice, if sin is in your life, ask God to forgive you for all of your sins. And heaven will come down and joy will fill your soul. Yep. And you too will celebrate just like those angels at the birth of Jesus Christ. Thank God for the message after the manger. It's revolutionary. It changes us. It keeps us. It saves us. And one day it will land us on heaven's shores. Yes. God bless you as our prayer. Uh, enjoy your time with your family. Love you. Stay safe. Our next service will be on Sunday morning, Sunday school at 9.15 a.m. God bless you. We love you. Amen.